BioBalance HealthCast, episode 152, Side Effects of Estrogen Replacement, part one. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, medical director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. One of the questions that comes up every time somebody looks at our podcast or or contacts your office or comes in uh, has to do with why why should I do this or why should I not do this? How do I make a good decision? And Mm -hmm. part of answering that question has to do with an assessment of side effects. Mm -hmm. And people, uh, in my business, uh, people come in all the time and they're talking about should I take antidepressants? Should I take anti-anxiety? Should I take mood uh, stabilizer, stabilizers or regulators? Mm-hmm. And all of those have side effects. Mm-hmm. And so if I take them, will I be better in this condition but worse in these conditions? And I know that that is similar in mm-hmm. what you do. And so we thought we'd take some time today to talk about the concept of side effects for estrogen replacement therapy. Right. We're going to start with uh, estrogen. And, and, and talk about it in terms of if you take it, if you take a replacement for the lost estrogen, what might be the side effects of what you take? Mm-hmm. And what are the side effects or what are the conditions if you don't take the replacement? So okay. that you, you can get enough information to seriously think about what's the best alternative for you. There's also very, there's a lot of ways to troubleshoot side effects, to pre, preemptively strike at them in, mm-hmm. in terms of uh, looking at, well, this patient probably from her history is going to have a side effect to estrogen of any type. But we also look at, the example of that is a woman who comes in and says, I could not take the pill. The pill was horrible. And then I tried the ring, which is not oral. That's that's transvaginal. I couldn't use that either. It made me sick. Or I have one person that said it gave her um, seizures, believe it or not. But I'm not sure how that works physiologically, right. but because of that, that puts your doctor at a point of going, oh, I have to find the very safest estrogen, mm-hmm. and I have to find the estrogen, and I have to preempt that side effect, and how if important is that side effect, and how dangerous is and, it? And do you play with minimal access, like let's start at the lowest possible dose, uh, or do you, do you start at a, a mid-range dose that's typical for average people? Uh, in your experience to gain the benefit that you want. I mean, how do you monitor dosage and the dosage questions? Because you were... I we do it a little differently preparing than... Preparing for this, you were saying that, that the uh, under and over are generally worse than the medium. Right. I was... I uh, In general, we're taught one size fits all. One dose of Premarin, one dose of Estrace, one dose of estrogen, yes. estradiol. But... In general, what really works to solve all the pro- all of the symptoms of uh, estrogen loss is a medium dose, and that in the medium there's a range, and within that, then that's kind of the art and the science of figuring out what the patient needs. Mm-hmm. I look at lab tests. If someone has a high FSH, and we've talked about FSH before, it's the hormone that stimulates uh, from the pituitary to the ovary, and if it actually causes estrogen to be produced. If the FSH is elevated very high after menopause, that means somebody, this patient in front of me, needs more estrogen than someone else. Mm -hmm. So I would go to the high end of normal to start out with and then recheck her hormones. Mm -hmm. So basically when giving estrogen, it's not the lowest possible dose. And we're gonna talk about the symptoms that estrogen, Let's go over the symptoms that estrogen treats. It treats hot flashes. It, it treats dry vagina, stress incontinence, it, um, which is like urine loss, irritable bladder. It treats uh, painful intercourse. And um, lots of times you get lichen sclerosis, which is a very thin paper-like skin on, on the bottom. It's it, on your bottom, on a female bottom. <laughs> it, um, sometimes it, it affects skin, it makes skin wrinkle, it makes skin look dry and old, it makes your hair fall out in the front, if you don't have estrogen, in the front of, uh, of your scalp. And so those are, those are all of the things that estrogen does prior to menopause. And if, and if you don't take it, I've just described what are the side effects of no estrogen. 
basically. Right. What happens when you have no estrogen? So, so do you get some of those? Do you get most of those? Do you get all of those? If you get, if, if uh, you mean the si those if kind you, of symptoms? If you don't symptoms? take estrogen, if you don't get it replaced, uh, it, it typically will most women who don't take it have uh, dry vaginas, painful mm -hmm. intercourse, uh, the sclerotic bottom. Mm -hmm. Is that like psoriasis? No, it looks like pa it just looks like paper. The skin's so thin that it cracks open, and they get bleeding and yeah. soreness, and mm -hmm. it's raw. Okay. And it would be impossible to have intercourse with that. And, and then a bladder infection. Bla bladder spasms, mm -hmm. urine loss when you stand up. Oh. You lose like all you the sneeze, tone to your you bladder. Laugh out loud, mm -hmm. or sometimes, you cough. sometimes that's anatomic dropping of the bladder, and sometimes that's just no support for the bladder and that is imp supports improved with estrogen. So let me let me make this clear not everyone has all those symptoms. That's what I'm asking. So most people have dry vagina. Most people have painful intercourse. But not everyone has all of these symptoms. It depends on your genetics and your history and your childbearing. There's so many different things that can set you up for these symptoms. But if you have those symptoms, you know you have them. Right. You know which ones you have. And then you know that that's related, now you know it's related to estrogen, and that estrogen replacement would be a good place to look for relief from that instead of taking five or six drugs for bladder spasms and, so, and so that kind of thing. dry vagina is in and of itself painful for intercourse. Mm -hmm. But then you also mentioned painful intercourse. That's a, a different situation? No, the dry right? vagina can be, um, it can be irritating when you wear blue jeans. It can be irritating when you wear clothing, underwear, uh, the elastic that's in uh, underwear. So it can just, it's so thin and so dry that um, the vagina shrinks. Mm -hmm. And so it's even painful sometimes to urinate. Okay. It's, ir it's, it's like having no defenses. Your whole bottom is just open to any bacteria or change in pH or any kind of rubbing. So that's one problem. But then for those people who have intercourse who have that problem, that makes it almost impossible to have intercourse. It's right. like having intercourse with sandpaper. Right. And it's very painful for, for the woman. Sure. And sometimes you get tears and, and breaks in the skin. Right. So all of those things, if you have the symptoms and take estrogen in the right form, those symptoms can go away. Okay. So what are the forms for delivering estrogen? Well, the forms, you, you can have oral pills, which is what most prescriptions are. Most prescriptions are oral pills like Premarin or um, es Estradiol in the form of Estrace. Those are, those are, or Ogen, those are all oral estrogens. Okay. Sometimes they come with a progest progestin with them. If you have a uterus, you have to take the combined. But those are the forms of oral estrogens. Then there are transdermal estrogens, which are the patches, the gels, the creams, and those are also prescription or bioidentical. You can get them in either and either you way. Put those in your arm. You put them uh, in your patch thigh, would be on your what? hip or your or your abdomen. Mm -hmm. um, the gels you can put on the inside of your arm, inside of your thighs. Mm -hmm. uh, same with the uh, cream, which is Estrazorb. They come in little packets, and you use one packet a day, mm -hmm. and that can be used. But none of those are bioidentical, but you can have bioidentical versions of those made by a compounding pharmacy. If you're using those gels, do you have to be really careful to make sure that uh, your teenage daughter doesn't handle them or that somebody else isn't exposed to them? I, I know men, yeah, that's men sometimes take like Flomax, mm -hmm. and it says, warning, women shouldn't handle these pills. and. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you're pregnant, especially, don't handle mm -hmm. these pills. It has to do with testosterone and not estrogen. Okay. So that's, in general, another woman who is who is coming in contact with this, mm -hmm. whether she be young or old, she's not going to get enough estrogen to bother her. Okay. I mean, you don't want to put it on that the children that are younger than menopause, right? Or or young adults, but. It's, if you rub up against them, it's not going to cause yeah, any so problem with a female. your dresser or something? Or, or no, that's not going to have okay. anything to do with it. Right. But the testosterone medications are important because they either block testosterone uh, production mm -hmm. when um, in women carrying children, if they're female or male, they'll be affected. Okay. So you don't want to have anybody who could be pregnant um, touching or using finasteride, right. which is one of the things, and and the Flomax. Okay. So those so, are so those are a different hormone. Is a, is a, a gel or a patch. Mm-hmm. 
And then transvaginal can be uh, a synthetic like a uh, ring, they have an S string, mm -hmm. which is like a ring that just has estrogen in it and it lasts for three months, which sounds kind of good, except uh, the fact that you would have to take it in and out for intercourse and it's a little bit of a hassle. It's kind of the opposite of a diaphragm. You take it out to have intercourse, you put it back in, oh, wow. you know, afterwards. So, uh -huh. so you don't want to expose your uh, partner to the estrogen. Okay, so that would be like S string. Now, if you're using Bioidentical, they don't have anything in a ring, but they do have creams and creams that can be in, injected into the um, vagina. Mm -hmm. And there is a, they also have little tablets that you can put into the vagina that'll dissolve that have estrogen in them. So compounding can be done if you want a pure bioidentical hormone. And they can, and you can also get the synthetic type through your regular physician. Yeah. What's the difference between synthetic and bioidentical? Well, synthetic synthetic is made in a lab. It's chem, it's a chemical, and bioidentical is made from uh, plants, and it looks exactly like your estrogen or my estrogen that I used to make. So when they look at the chem chemical chain for the bioidentical, it's indistinguishable from the chemical chain of naturally produced estrogen. Uh, right. It looks okay. exactly the same, but the synthetics don't. Yeah. They have to change them a little bit to get through the skin or to get mm -hmm. through the stomach. Mm -hmm. And so they're, they're a little different. So when we're talking about side effects, side effects are divided by how you take, how you take your um, estrogen mm -hmm. and also by whether they're synthetic or bioidentical. So in general, the side effects are lower from the bioidentical and higher for the synthetic. But we haven't even talked about the types of side effects, so I'd like to go over that. Yes. The, there's, I, I divide side effects into symptomatic, meaning they bother you, but they're not going to cause you to be sick. They're not going to cause you to have a medical procedure. They're just a hassle. So that's symptomatic. Okay. Then medium severity is of a side effect would be something that might cause you to go to the doctor, might cause you to have... Um, a, another symptom or a problem, those are in the middle, those are moderate. And then the medically severe or life-threatening ones mm -hmm. are a, kind of a completely different category and we have to talk about them separately. Okay. But the mild ones, most people know if they take estrogen, usually oral, usually synthetic, more often they get breast tenderness. We also get it with pellets sometimes. So breast tenderness, water retention, Excessive vaginal wetness, which is a problem some people complain of, hmm. believe it or not. Mm -hmm. um, and then cellulite and fat collection under the skin. That's what cellulite is, and it's also kind of puckered. Right. So that happens often. Located mostly around the, the buttocks and, and thighs. Thighs right in the middle. Mm -hmm. And then um, you can get irritability and PMS as well, kind of PMS kind of symptoms, because if you're not taking a progesterone, then the estrogen causes you to feel that same imbalance that you felt before you were menopausal when you had too much estrogen or you were estrogen dominant, or not you, but if a woman was estrogen dominant and uh, she didn't have well, enough progesterone. Dominated. Yeah, well, yeah, you have that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got that from all sides. Yeah. So those are, but those simple, those are the, the mild side effects. I'd like to go through each of them, each of the types or the severity, and then go through what we do about them. Okay. Because there are ways to treat, especially the mild ones and the moderate ones, mm -hmm. then, uh, or troubleshoot so the patients don't get that. Right. So we can fix these side effects. These are not side effects that you go, oh, like, if you take an antidepressant, you're not go you may not have a sex life because mm -hmm. you don't have desire. Right. That's something it's very hard to fix with, with uh, antidepressants. Estrogen doesn't have that type of side effect Severity, in, gen right. in general. Mm -hmm. So the moderate ones uh, are the dysfunctional uterine bleeding, like you have abnormal bleeding, you might have to see the doctor to have your uterus ultrasounded. You may, you may have to see if there's a, like a fibroid or Ult a polyp. Ultrasound to see if there's something in inside it that's causing the, it to bleed. Right. Okay. And then, uh, so that means a procedure going to the doctor, but it doesn't mm -hmm. mean something life-threatening. Mm -hmm. um, then uh, the another one is weight gain. Now weight gain seems to be just a. Wait, wait, I, I, can okay. I ask a question? Yes. Okay. So uh, somebody takes estrogen, then they start to have vaginal bleeding. 
they go and they get an ultrasound. The ultrasound is to see if there's a polyp or a tear. That polyp would, or a fibroid or a thickened lining on the inside and, of the and uterus. That, those would potentially be caused by taking the estrogen? Yeah, estrogen can't, not it can. caused, it stimulates them to bleed. It makes fibroids grow. So it exacerbates a, an existing condition. Problem. That's right. Okay, that's what I was trying Absolutely. to Absolutely. It doesn't actually It doesn't cause create it. the problem. No, it just stimulates those the fibroid or the polyp or the thick so lining to bleed. So when one of those bleed. things raises its head and says, I'm here, then you treat that. We have to diagnose and treat it. Okay. Yes. So we have to send for tests. Mm -hmm. That means you have to go to the doctor. So that's mm -hmm. why I put this in the moderate category. Right. So you have to have it looked at. But it was something that was going to be there anyway. It's something that every time we do this, if we, we now do ultrasounds before we start estrogen therapy. Because I want to know what's there. Yeah. But in yeah. the past. You got five polyps hanging in there. Yeah. I don't we may want to get those taken care yeah, of. Yeah. We want those out first. Yeah. And then we can give you your estrogen. Because okay. we'll, we know you'll bleed from those polyps. Sure. But in the very beginning, I wasn't trained to do ultrasounds to begin with. That right. just wasn't part of the protocol. And we had a few people who had their estrogen pellets, and a few months later, they started to bleed, even though we gave them progesterone. And you, you do those at your office, or they have to you send them out to their we regular? We send them to their regular gynecologist, okay. just because they have ultrasounds in their office. I don't. But we sent that. So we sent these patients that were bleeding, and one of them actually had a a cancerous polyp. Now, mm -hmm. cancer doesn't happen in two months. It happens over years inside the uterus. And so our giving her the estrogen actually stimulated her to get an ultrasound, to go to the doctor, to get it treated. And she had a hysterectomy and she was cured. Yeah. I mean, that's life amazing. Yeah, it was exactly. life saving. So Absolutely. now we look first. Some right. of those things, doctors <laughs> change. Some of them are like, duh. <laughs> doctors change their protocols. Even though we're taught to do one thing, we often add blood tests, we add ultrasounds, we add, add, add other tests so that we can be caref more careful and catch mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes it seems tedious, yet it's because we want to protect you from one of the side effects and not have you find out when you start bleeding and go, uh-oh, I want to know ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So there are ways to, to actually not necessarily prevent, but troubleshoot it and, and keep you safe. So, okay, let's go to... Um, Weight gain, okay. because that's something everybody asks me. They have studies and studies that say that estrogen of any type doesn't cause you to gain weight. But I just, I, honestly, I don't necessarily believe that. Oral Anecdotally, estrogen. Anecdotally? No, or in terms physiologically. Of the data that you right. Physiologically and experientially. Okay. Over the years when I've used oral estrogen, even if it's bioidentical oral estrogen, it makes estrone. Estrone makes belly fat. I mean, it's just... It's just a common thing. Sometimes people taking the pill because it's oral will get belly fat. Well, now, but is that a weight gain or a body distribution change? Both. Okay. It's, it's usually fat gain mm -hmm. and fat in the middle, but they don't like take fat off their thighs and put it in their stomach. It's still on their thighs. They just, they, we women always, you know, usually when we're young, we get it on our thighs and our behind. And then as we get older, we get it here. That's because of the hormone estrogen. And we'll talk about that. But, um, but this, the weight gain is something women hate. And Absolutely. the studies, so many studies say, oh, it doesn't cause that. But I'm not, I mean, I have seen this for years and years. Maybe it's all just the Midwest women. But I take care of people from all over the world. And if they've been on oral estrogen and I put them on pellets, yeah. they don't make estrone and their belly fat goes away. Yeah, so, you, you have people I mean, flying I have from Australia and Germany <laughs> yeah. to, to get treated. So it can't be just Midwest women yeah. who, when they switch the type of estrogen to something that's not oral, they lose their belly fat. Mm -hmm. It's just something that, that's why doctors call it the practice of medicine. Mm -hmm. Because everything we do, we take in all this information about all the people we've seen, and then we develop some some, I guess, biases. Mm -hmm. and, when a, and when a study comes up and says, no, that's not true, and I know my whole, my whole practice life, it's been true, I go, mm, what's wrong with that study? And I have to look at it. Or you, you assume, you know, they just haven't found the right explanatory link yet. Right, they're looking but, maybe at the wrong factor. Yeah, right. But so the other, um, the other moderate um, side effect mm -hmm. is actually swelling or retention of salt and water, mm -hmm. okay? And that's more common in oral than it is in non-oral. 
more common in synthetic than it is in, in bioidentical. So do you give a diuretic for that? Yes, we do, okay. actually. Mm -hmm. But in general, it's better just to switch your estrogen to a bioidentical non-oral so that the swelling goes down. The bad news about the swelling is if you retain too much salt and water, then you can actually increase your blood pressure. Yes. And, and or if you, if you have a lot of swelling in your lower extremities, then you can make your veins work too hard to try to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. And so your veins may, may get larger, mm -hmm. varicose veins. Mm -hmm. So it's not good to have water in your lower extremities either. I mean, mm -hmm. it could be, it's all over from estrogen. Anyway, lastly. Well, gravity pulls all that down and then your heart has to pump harder right. to try to get it back up. And right. so you get stress and strain on the heart as well. Right, but that none of those are a direct A to B to, to disease. Right, they're just they're not just a hassle. Mm -hmm. They're a little bit more than a hassle. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I okay. guess my grading system is yeah is such that you have to look at what does it lead to. Does it lead to nothing except making you miserable? Well, that's bad, right. but we can fi we can and, fix that. And what are the treatments? And how do they moderate it then? Uh, how severe is the treatment or the intervention? Right, and they are, most of our interventions for estrogen mm -hmm. are they make estrogen worth taking. They're not they're not very they're not very extensive. Mm -hmm. So we can make it so that a woman can take estradiol and feel normal. Okay. Now I think we are going to go into our uh, the severe mm -hmm. side effects of estrogen. On our next on our next okay. chat, right. and uh, we'll go through those in our troubleshooting uh, that we do for estrogen. So troubleshooting meaning how do we stop the big things, how do we stop the middle things, and how do we stop the small things? So when you say severe side effects, you're talking about things that that lead to major medical conditions right. or problems. Yes. So if you're interested in hearing about those and the trouble troubleshooting process for discovering and treating those, then be sure that you come back for our next podcast. Thank you for listening today. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.